So at this point we should see this is a multi-faceted project in that there was all of that coding, then there was some design of the app, there was also the publishing of the app, developer credentials, developing the app store, app store assets, etc. Okay, and we're done now, right? We're ready to get rich, right? What's next is now people need to know about our app. So we have this um, this option in there that said, would you like to be featured as a free app and all of that. So Amazon will help us to some point, but there's thousands, millions of apps. So here's how we help ourselves. We use social media. So we have all of the big social networks at our disposal, and obviously this is not a class where we learn a lot of social media, but we've got Facebook, of course. We've got Twitter, of course. You have to decide where it might be a good idea to to get it to gain an audience for your app and any one of these will work if you put the time and effort Twitter, Periscope, Instagram, all of these social networks what I'm gonna recommend and what I will show directly is perhaps one of the best ways to do it in that Facebook is great because there are so many people using Facebook Facebook is not so great because there are so many people using Facebook you're gonna be a needle in a haystack and when I teach the social media class, I go into much more detail in all of this, and I talk about that. Uh, I personally don't like Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook. I don't log in. My friends and family say, why didn't you like my photo? I don't know. I didn't log in. I don't, I don't like Facebook, personally. Business-wise, I put that away, and then I use social networks like Facebook um, as best as I can. So Facebook is very effective to reach an audience, but the trick about Facebook is nowadays, really, because of the change of the algorithm, you're going to have to invest in Facebook, literally. You're going to have to pay some amount of money to get your, your, your posts on Facebook to show to more people. People to people is not a big deal, but a company to people, that's a big deal. And Facebook has changed the algorithm so that now you have to pay. You can pay as, as a little as, as a dollar to get started. You can pay five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars. Obviously, the more that you pay, the more of an audience you will reach on Facebook. I don't want to talk about that because it's not free. Twitter, on the other hand, you can use that pretty effectively uh, in that a company could reach out to people. To tweet to people, could say, check out my app directly. So this Twitter can get you in contact with potential customers much, much more direct. You'll have to take the effort, however, though, of using, uh, using the search capabilities to find people based on their keywords, their, their, their biographies, their preferences, their locations, and all of that. But once you master search, you will be able to then find your audience on Twitter. So I like that. But what I'm going to show you instead is Google+. So Google+, is a Google um, social network. Uh, they created it to compete with Facebook and with, uh, with Twitter. And unfortunately, it's always had a bad rap um, because Facebook has just been this juggernaut of social media. Everyone has heard of it, everyone uses it. 1.4 billion people in the world use Facebook. Twitter, their latest numbers released a couple of weeks ago, I believe it said about 329 million people use it. So Facebook is way larger. And for Google, they've never quite given an exact value of the, the number of people using Face of Google+, Plus because they, Google mashed up together too many numbers. They mashed up the number of people using YouTube and Gmail and Google+. Plus. So you don't get an accurate view of, of how many people use Google+, Plus. but I can safely say hundreds of millions of people use Google+. Plus. And for me, it's my favorite social network. This is the one where I'm spending all my time posting pictures and replying to people and meeting friends and all of that social networking stuff. And it works because I have uh, I have uh, about 3 million views personally on Google+. Plus. I get a lot of activity on, on Google+. Plus. And what I'm going to show you is if you do decide to create a Google+, Plus account, the thing that I really like about it is that you've got what are known as communities where you can post your content, post your pictures, post your apps, post your videos, whatever, directly in these communities where people that care about a subject are at. So there's hundreds of millions of people using Google. But we want to target the people that really care about our app, education app, so we're going to go to a community where everyone's talking about 
and connecting about education. So I'm going to log in to my Google Plus account. You probably don't have one, and we're not really going to talk about creating one, but it's very straightforward. I'm just going to log in and show you internally how this looks like. Because this is a way to market your app, to get attention for your app, to get people to learn about your app. Maybe to build some buzz, to go viral. So hopefully there isn't anything uh, not safe for work. So um, this is my Google Plus, but I'm going to switch over to a company profile, for example. Just as this example. So we can have uh, personal accounts and company accounts on Google Plus, very similar to Facebook, in that you create a personal account and uh, then create business accounts. Now this is something I created for another class, Victor's Bakery. I created it a week ago. It has 750 views so far in one week. So um, that that's what I'm saying about the, um, the reach if you know where to look on Google+. Uh, so briefly, for example, this profile, Victor's Bakery, it's a bakery, and I'm getting here people replying. I'm getting uh, attention here. Uh, if I create a brand new Facebook account, a, a brand new Twitter account, and just start tweeting, and if I don't have any followers, no one's going to know, no one's going to pay attention, no one's going to care. Here, I created this account, I had no followers, I'm already getting replies. I'm already getting people replying and, and chiming in on the conversation. So here uh, I ask the question, we're trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. What do you suggest we try to bake the largest of? People reply, dosa. I don't know what that is, but it probably is tasty. Cannoli and enchilada. So people are replying, random people um, on social media. The trick is that I am posting to communities. So if you set up a Google Plus profile, you have the Google menu, and I can go to communities. Yeah, I've got suggested communities and I can search. But here, for example, I've got a YouTube promote your video community where 300,000 members are connected there and looking for a new YouTube video. Because I've already selected a food community, it's suggesting more food ones, such as food recipes. So 21,000 members. So what I can do is instead of posting out to the void, where I've got no followers. I can join a community, and then I can post to that community, and I've got a captive audience. So that's what I did up here. I joined Cookies and Cupcakes community and Cooking community. This has got only 470 members. This one's got 179,000 members. So when I join a community, I have the ability here, post. Post text, post photos, post links. And then this community, then people are sharing in this case, obviously, their food. And then people are replying, people are liking it, people are sharing it. And this is my big secret about uh, using Google Plus to reach an audience. If you're just starting off in social media, you can have an uphill battle on the other social networks. On Google Plus, you have right away built in a place where you can go to find the people that care about what you care about. So such as, my app is education. What's under education? Learning Revolution, 336,000. The Global Education, something, 71,000. Education, 92,000. Google Apps for Education. Hmm, maybe if I go to this community and click Join. And then let's say my app has been published. When your app is published, you will have... Um, you will have a, a link to your app you will have a link to your app 
eventually. And so if I'm on Google+, I can share a link there in, the, in a community. It'll then create a listing for me, and I can say, we are sharing our free educational app It features classes at San Diego Continuing Education. We'd like you to try it out. It's free. So I can post to a community. This is all about apps for education. So I found, I found a target audience. Within a community, they often have then uh, subsections. I want to post in the correct section. But actually, before I post, I want to check a little bit about the community because these are not areas that Google creates. These are areas that people on Google Plus create. And oftentimes, they have a moderator or multiple moderators. So real people that care about a subject are looking at the posts and deleting posts that don't follow the rules or reprimanding people if they do something wrong. So there could be different levels of moderation. But here, looking at the about, it says simply connect, connection, discussion, sharing, discovery with Google Apps for Education. Um, tips. Some of them will say, do not post your apps. Do not post your advertising. Do not post a link to your to your website, and some are very open. Let's say share whatever, be nice, etc. So you always want to to look at the community rules. But let's say because this doesn't really matter. Let's say I read the rules. I'm following all the rules. I'm choosing a community, and I'm choosing also where should I put this? Let's see. Resources. Apps. I'll put this under resources. And share. So now this post has been added, this link directly over to my Amazon listing. All the 155 people that have subscribed or joined to this community could potentially see my app. This is, a, this is an art and a science. I don't just simply want to go to every one of these potential communities and spam my, uh, my app there. I can, I can look up you know, just generically Android. I'll find a variety of Android communities. This is a big popular one. It's got 1.2 million members. So I can go to the Android community. I can post my app there as well. Here we've got a section for apps, but notice right away, no spam. Please read before. Read these 124 lines of rules. Um, so, like, no nudity, no piracy no direct APK links, no hacked apps. So there's moderators here that are serious. So let's just say, yes, I read the rules. I'm going to join. And I'm going to advertise that that app there.
And so I'll put this in the proper um, section of the community. I'll click share. And so this is this is part of the whole process as well, getting people to know about your app. I could share on my own personal Facebook as well. Um, I could let my friends and family know. I could go to various social networks, but the one I'm recommending is Google Plus because it's got these communities where you can post your apps there, where you can uh, connect with with people that care about your your apps. What I also like is you can look up, for example, JavaScript. There's various JavaScript communities. It's it's in a sense like the the Stack Exchange in that we've got a JavaScript community where people are sharing and answering questions. Um, I myself have come here and gotten answers faster than Stack Exchange, where I've been looking up or I've been trying to find out information why my, why is this code broken perhaps so I I put my code on github and then I put a link here and I ask and this is what's going on and I have gotten answers to to some of my issues so on this in this sense again this is another reason why I like Google Plus uh, it, it has gotten a bad rap uh, I always see these articles all the time about uh, you know RIP Google Plus all the time uh, just a new one came out a couple of weeks ago because uh, Facebook is just has so much inertia. It's such the big social network that, uh, for better or for worse, um, you're not going to get people to to leave. Most people to leave those social networks because I don't want to leave my friends and family and my grandma and my uncle. They're all on. They're all on Facebook. Well, uh, I want to use these social networks to connect with new and interesting people. Uh, I don't want to connect back again with those high school people and all of that. So I'm on. Google Plus, for example, to find interesting new people, and it has been uh, very cool and useful for me. So, for yourself, for your apps, the um, the allure of, of Google Plus, I believe, is very uh, very good because you'll be able to target people that would care about what your app is about. So again, the the class is. The, the social media class is going to explain much more of all of this. I really breezed through it all. But the point is that using any social network is very helpful and pretty much minimal thing that you need to do for your app. People won't, uh, won't find it. Um, m enough people might not find it to really be a viable app, so you have to take the effort to, uh, to promote it. And social media is a form of promotion. So my app is still going to show under review for a little while, but ideally, like I said in a previous class, we would upload our app on a Tuesday, we would come in on the Thursday, our app would be available. So then I would talk a little bit about um, uploading a version 2 of it. I can't quite show it, but that would require you editing your app and then making sure that in your config XML file you update that version code or you will get an error. So if it is a new version of the, of the app, if it is um, an updated, any any amount of code that gets changed is a version 2. So if we do add extra features to the app, take away, change design, etc., it's a new version. So I would uh, update my version code here, and then it's up to you to decide how you're changing then the um, the this version number as well, this version name, because... because uh, that can be linked. For example, that can also be set to 2 point something. If I've got version code 2, Android version code 2, I can put 2 and then point um, you know, next month 9 0, 2. And so if, if we did have the time then we'd uh, republish this version of it, version 2, and go through the process on Amazon to update the app. We can't quite do it, but we'd have a button that's, that would say, um, I think it's called something like uh, add updated version.
So throughout the whole time of these three months, we've gone from beginning to end, um, just to get kind of get a show of hands. How many of you, when you started the class three months ago, had zero to little experience in all of this? Raise your hand. So a few people. I'm going to count you too, Julia. Uh, so um, people started in that level. How many of you would say you had an um, a intermediate to advanced experience in some of these technologies? A few people. So we had both sides of the coin there. And we've gone through it all. So for those of you that stuck it out all the way to this end, it could still be a lot of... Uh, you know, confusion and a lot of um, uh, broken code and all of that, but uh, you you could see that it is doable. This is all attainable. If you did have experience already, you, you hopefully learned a, a thing or two different. And usually, when you take some of these classes, you don't get the full the full course in that. Now we've got an app. Let's publish it. So I I do the whole thing. And then now that we've got an app published, let's advertise it a little social media. If we had more of that time, we'd do more with our code. We'd do more with our uh, marketing and, and all of that stuff, and version updates and testing and so forth. So I'm going to end the main lecture a little bit early um, to kind of work individually if we need it. But um, any general questions on anything we've talked about? When we, when we reset our phone, will the app still be on it? Nope. If you go into your settings and go to reset, it goes all back to factory settings and your, and your app will, will be gone. But if you've got your your code, you can always upload it again. All right, so we'll we'll have a, some lab time. We'll end the main lecture at this point. So uh, thank you for coming.